All right, let's get into this game against the Seattle Seahawks. What a game to come out of the bye week against your rivals, a team that is a game behind the Cardinals. Everybody's a game behind the Cardinals. That's just the, the nature of the NFC West. But Seattle's the one in the division, though, we haven't seen play the Cardinals yet. They're going to see it twice now in the next uh, three games, basically like two and a half weeks in real time. Uh, you're coming out of the bye and you're playing a rival what what do you what have you seen from Seattle so far? They're to me one of the hardest teams in the league to get a read on. Yeah, I mean, because you hear people talk about them, like I mean, because they did you know lose several games in a row. But you look at them versus the 49ers last week and Geno Smith and how he looked, especially in that first half. And obviously they came back yeah. and was able to beat the Niners. And uh, you know, what is he leading leading the league and comeback? touchdowns like 17 like a month quarterback so he has that the ability that to play blew me away when I right heard that. yeah he, they also the way they play they trust him and when you look at their roster right when they got Jackson Smith in, in Jogba they got DK Metcalf they got Tyler Lockett these guys are averaging you know a touch or a first down a catch um and so they have weapons on the outside not to mention when you think about Walker the third um, in the running game and the, and the ability to to be explosive there as well, right? Being a physical football team. And so if you allow this team to, much like the Jets in some ways, stay around, feel like they're part of it and they're doing well, right? They have the, the, the dogs or they have the horses to go out there and beat you. Yeah. As we saw them beat the 49ers, even though the 49ers won 100% because of the names I just named. They have guys. And so you have to make sure, especially from a defensive perspective, that first you stop the run early and often. Um, and then I think they have the ability, you know, watching the offensive line of the Seahawks, they, there's some guys, especially maybe that left side of the offensive line, where they can maybe take advantage of, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or running some type of games that they weren't able to pass off well last week versus the 49ers. And if you can mix that in, do well there, get them off on some third downs, um, and then obviously continue to do really well in the red zone because the, yeah. they, they still, in the first half, they kick field goals versus the 49ers. So if you can still do that to them, maybe get a, a, a turnover or two, um, you have the ability to beat this team in Seattle, which I know historically the Cardinals have always done pretty well, yeah. you know. <laughs> But uh, specifically this time when you go up there, because it's always an, a new season, a new year. You know, it's really interesting in rundown situation. First and 10, mm -hmm. second and one to six, the Seahawks, they, they favor 11 personnel, as most the league does for the most part. 77% of the time. That's a high percentage, yeah. don't you think, for being in one personnel group? That's a high percentage right there. And they run the ball 32 percent of the time out of that and throw it 68 yeah. we're talking about rundown here right and yet man they're still doing very very well number one in terms of passing yards per game and number 13 in passing yards per play typically when you throw the ball that much in rundown situation I'm thinking you're dinking it. You're dinking nah. it. Yeah, you're, you're dinking it. No. He's not dinking no, it like I said, all those, the time. Those three dudes are averaging a first down to catch, <laughs> yeah. so they're moving the ball down the field. Um, I'm pretty sure if you got a little deeper in the analytics, they probably get down to the red zone and stall out. Can't punch it in all the time, right? Or if something goes wrong, a turnover. They're number 22 uh, in the, red zone the, offense. There you go. Oh, no. right. Gino's numbers don't add and up. what do you got to be able to do? You got to be able to run the, the ball. ball. Right. And I know Kenneth Walker the third is really, really good. He's physical. He's a physical. Oh, I love the way he runs the ball. But that offensive line right. is, is the killer for them right now. Gino's got, uh, you mentioned, leading the, the league in passing yards per game, but 11 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. So you can turn them over, like right. you were saying. So, um, you, okay, so you mentioned the, the, the Seahawks receivers. Cardinals secondary, specifically these young corners, are, are getting better pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess this is probably their biggest test so far, huh? Right, yeah. I mean, and they've played sticky coverage. I mean, even when you think about the Jets game and how they were over Devontae Adams and, and that, that receiving core, they did a really good job, right? I think as long as the secondary communicates well, there's no breakdown in my job, my role, they're always going to be in position because, as you said, they're pretty athletic pretty physical and and I, and I like the way they attack the football as well um earlier on in the season their issue was just being on different pages and when you're on different pages guys running free you're gonna give up some shots so yeah. just continue to keep the ball in front of you because Gino does want to take the take the ball down the field and they have the guys that they can do it but as long as you guys are on 
the same page, passing off routes appropriately, depending on what type of coverage they're in, and communicating well and making him throw, forcing him to throw the check down, that's going to be a, a significant benefit in this game for the Cardinals defense. You know, conversely, when you look at the Arizona Cardinals and their use of power personnel groups in rundown situation right now, first and 10, second and one to six, 57% of the time, man, they are in a power personnel group mm. in rundown. It's, you know, for the league, for the most part, you can look at it and you can say, well, 11 personnel, that is that is what most teams are in, even in rundown situation, a lot of it. The Arizona Cardinals, 38% of the time in 12 and 19% of the time in 13 personnel. You put those two personnel groups together, 57% of the time, they're in a power personnel group and they're going to run the ball 70% of the time, 74% right. of the time. They're going to light up and they're going to run the ball. Guess what? Here it comes, the Seattle Seahawks. Number 26 in rushing yards per game allowed. Number 26 in rushing yards per play allowed. They've had a hard time. Now, yeah. Brock Heward was telling us they've gotten better over the last couple of mm -hmm. weeks. They've gotten better. Well, I still, I'm going to test that. Right. And, and, <laughs> I'm going to see how much better you've gotten. And I don't think most teams have the personnel the Cardinals have when you think about Trey, Elijah, and Tip as far as in the tight end room and you're trying to get those guys That's out right. there because I, I, Trey and Elijah give you a dual threat. They both can block. Trey's probably a little ahead of Elijah in that, but then they also can go out and be pass catchers too. So I can run the ball, but if we really need to, I can then do the play-action game and find my guys and still have some of my offense, maybe line up one of those guys as a slot receiver. And so I'm in 13, but I'm really playing 12, or I'm in 12, but really playing 11. Gives you some flexibility when you have those type of tight ends that are on your roster and, and some of your better players, so you're trying to find ways to get them out there. So I would... You know, watching the, the 49ers, right, working them edges like they've been doing, you know, some of the stretch zone GCs when they're pulling guys, getting to the edges. I also think Kyler's going to have an opportunity to scramble in this game. They did a poor job, Seattle, I believe, versus Brock Purdy. He was able to extend some drives, score a couple of touchdowns um, in the red zone. And Kyler, we all know, is a way better athlete out in space. So I think there's going to be some opportunity for him, whether it's designed or not, mm -hmm. to make some plays with his legs in this game as well. We've talked so much because it's been so obvious how much he has improved this year, or even since he came back last year. What do you think the next step is for Kyler Murray? Consistency yeah. from week to week. I mean, I think that first half, why the reason why his name is not it was not in the, the MVP talk the whole time is because he'll have a great game and then a I don't know game, a great game, I don't know game. And and when I say I don't know game, it was from from my perspective watching it. He was just managing the game, yeah. right? Just doing nothing special, nothing. But he wasn't, like, losing. He wasn't the reason bad, why they were losing, right? Right. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Let me clarify that, too, because, you know, that that first seven weeks or yeah. till it felt like, why, why are we trying to trade this dude? This dude has grown up. He's doing really well, making some progressions. Obviously, every game is not elite, but he's doing really well when you look at him and his totality of work and where he's going and understanding that he's coming off – Really, this is his first year in the system from start to beginning and has some new pieces. So I've really liked it. It's, got, it's getting better. Um, now we want to see just that consistency from week to week. And the way, you know, this Seattle's – I think Seattle's defense is going to give him a lot of opportunity once again with the run game and the play action off the run game, kind of similar to how they opened up against the Jets to get him going early often and get everybody really involved. Man, and I'll tell you, Darius Robinson, I'm thinking of the defense right now, the defense. The defense <laughs> I hope for Wolf's sake he plays. The defense. I, if there's one position I think the Arizona Cardinals need right now that would impact them winning and losing games – on that defensive side of the ball, I, I would say it would be a three technique. It would be a Darius Robinson? It would be a Darius Robinson, in my opinion. Because you know what? Pressure can make a quarterback do funny things when he throws the ball as right. well. And sometimes, because he's under pressure, you throw the ball to somebody else. Especially that you shouldn't be. pressure up in the A yes. and B gap, right? It's yes. one thing for a guy to be able to turn the edge. I can step up. If I can step up, because that's what quarterbacks are taught to do, I can still feel confident and comfortable as far as keeping yes. my eyes down the field. But if that dude is in my face, I can't keep my eyes 
down the field. That was Aaron Donald. Right. right? You couldn't yeah. step oh, up. where am I going? Where am I going? And then maybe the edge rusher gets you, but that three technique is the one that created the pressure. So um, just from a schematic and where he lines up mostly, that's going to be heavily uh, uh, advantageous for the Cardinals defense if he's able to come out and do what we're talking about. He has still, the ability to. Still can't believe you were a three technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to I still mean, rush I mean, it back in the day, I'm too. Just saying, bro. Even when I got small, I, really, I never left it. They used to, man, how you got all this power, baby? You didn't. You don't know my backstory, do you? You don't know my origin. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my face mask. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Know why, yeah. So, this is awesome as always, man. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, always. Thank you, Lorenzo Help Alexander you, joining us right there. Thanks for watching Wolf and Luke. Tap to see more and click the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.